Anyways. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. My name is Ark Revner and I like to play games, and today I want to talk about Zhongli. Now, if you saw my last video, you'll see that I did end up summoning for him. I test run him and played his event, and it was great. I think that he's a great character. I actually think that he may be one of the best utility characters in the game, um, if not one of the best units in the game. I know he's not exactly what everyone anticipated him being. Everyone thought he'd be dealing a lot more damage with like his auto and charge attack. However, I think that his sustainability more than makes up for it, which you'll see in this fight. I decided to try to take on Tartaglia and just see how I did up against him. After I built him and set up his shields and got my artifacts all in set, I actually was able to beat Tartaglia only taking damage twice. Two times. I was actually shocked that I was actually able to do this because I'm not the most technically proficient player. Um, I usually make up for things by doing a lot of research and making sure that I know what artifacts that I want on them, um, making plans beforehand. So I never really thought that this would even be possible. But as you can see, I'm actually doing fairly large numbers. I'm keeping complete control over the battle. And he's taking no damage, essentially. I don't think I took, I didn't take any damage the first segment of this battle. I think I took damage once during the second part and then once during the third part, but that's it. And what else can I say? I soloed one of the hardest content in the game just using this character. I think that says that he's a pretty good character in his own right because even the high damage dealers, they don't have the utility support that Zhongli has and if I tried doing this with Kui or Child, my other main DPS units, I don't think I would have made it through the battle because honestly they're a little too squishy and they would take- yeah. Right there, I just took a little bit of damage. But, um, you can also see the, those little green marks. I actually ended up C6-ing Zhongli because I liked him that much. I think he's that good. I don't think that you need to C6 him in order for him to be good. I do think that he is very good just at C0. Um, he adds a lot of utility there. I think if you are going to end up going for a constellation, maybe try to go for one, just so you can get an extra Domitus Lapidus. But besides that, you don't actually need any of his constellations in order to make him good. I just did it because he's my favorite character in the game, and I like maining him, I like his playstyle, I think that it's a lot of fun to play, and I really enjoy playing it. So. And at the end of the day, I think that's all that you can really do with characters, is see whether you like playing them, whether you think that you're going to put a lot of time and effort into them, and whether you'll be playing them long term. That's the only reason to end up going for constellations, in my opinion, or to invest in a character at all. And as you can see, Zhongli's playstyle is great. Like, if you're patient, if you can take your time, avoid damage, you can charge through most battles on your own. Even though you may not be dealing large numbers, you'll never be taken out. You're going to be doing consistent damage. And even without C6, the healing factor, I think I still would have made it out of this battle with about 90% of my health, which is insane. I don't think there's a single other character that can do that currently, besides maybe Noel, but... I do think that Zhongli is better than Noel, that's just my personal opinion, but because I think that he is a lot more flexible in what he can do. I ended up building him as a main DPS, but I actually think he's probably better suited to be a DPS support unit, but I just wanted to prove that he can be a main DPS if you want him to be, if you want to put in the time and effort, you can make him just as good as other DPS, you just have to know how to play him and play him smart. And yeah, that was the second time I took damage during the entire fight. It went really well. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, I hope that 
seeing this will change some people's minds about whether Zhongli is bad or good because I'm hearing a lot of discourse online about whether he's actually a good unit because he's not a main DPS. Just because you're not a main DPS doesn't mean you're a good unit. Um, point in case, people like Mona are great characters. They're S-tier characters. Um, but they're not a main DPS, they're a support DPS. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's up to how you want to play. But I just wanted to quickly show you guys my build, give you a little bit of insight into how I ended up deciding to go about building Zhongli, because I think that some people have brought up this set before, but I don't think that people have really gone into why it's so good and why I think that it suits Zhongli so incredibly well. So as you can see, I actually did end up pulling for the Vortex Vanquisher. I do think that this is probably his best weapon for the specific artifacts that I went for. Um, it does increase his shield strength, which is great, which adds to his durability. Um, the different attack stats are great. When you stack them, it gets up to 20. And then if you do have a shield up, it increases your attack by 40%, which is amazing. It has an attack um, secondary stat. So it really just puts you over the edge in terms of overall offense and defense. It's a really well-rounded weapon. I do think that the weapon banners are a little bit hit and miss because you may not get it necessarily, but I do think that this weapon is good. I do think it's worth it. All right, if we're going to look at the different artifact now, you can see that I actually ended up going with Retracing Bolide. I went with this set because as I looked at Songwei's kit, it seemed like Unlike other characters, it seemed really shield focused, and I think I was right. Point in case, that fight with Child, my shield is what carried me through it, and I was able to chip away at him because I knew that I wasn't going down. So increasing my shield strength by 35% was definitely the way to go. Also, while you're shielded, you gain an additional 40% normal and charged attack damage, which is insane. Um, it all of a sudden makes him hit a lot harder, and for, since he doesn't have very good multipliers on his regular attacks anyway, I thought that that was the way to go. Um, I tried to farm for things. I didn't get all the stats that I wanted, but I got pretty decent amounts. I mainly tried to get crit rate, crit damage. Um, I found a few with energy recharge, thank god. It, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, I did manage to get an attack um, timepiece. A physical damage bonus cup which I think was really great for him as a main DPS. I think that if you are going for a support go geo damage all the way I think that's definitely better for a support build but since I wanted him out on the field more often I thought that physical damage bonus was the best way to go. And lastly I ended up going with the crit rate um, mask. I did want crit damage here However, I wasn't able to get enough crit rate on my other pieces to make it worth it. So, you know, I think that the Primordial Jade Spear would have complemented him a little bit better that if I wanted to get the crit damage, but this way I still have a lot of attack and I was able to supplement crit rate here using the math. And it works out pretty well. Um, I'll show some of the attributes a little bit later. All right, and as I mentioned, I did end up C6ing Zhongli. I don't think that you need to do this by any means. I do think that he is really good at C0. I'm not kidding. I think that he's great at C0. I think that he's more than viable. But if you do end up going for constellations, I do think that C1 is worth it. C1 is very good. Just having two different Dominus Lapidus's is a game changer. You're able to actually have a lot more control over things. You're not reliant on having another Geo character in your party in order to provide your own energy recharge. You're able to control the field a lot better. I do think that this constellation does change his kit. I do think that C0 is good, but C1 is definitely better. However, all of the other ones, like, once you start getting into c2 it's great it adds an extra shield whenever you use your ult but it's not necessary you don't need it 
like you can set up your own shield you can manage your own shield i think that c2 is just kind of mediocre to be honest i thought it was going to be a lot different than it actually is um i would say that that's his only bad constellation though because all the other ones are amazing i do think that having um obviously c3 and c5 you just increase but c4 is really good because it does increase your aoe um by 20 percent which is massive and it increases the petrification effect by two seconds two seconds doesn't sound like a lot but it really does make a difference um but it just gives you a little more utility a little more time to think about things so i personally like it you don't need it though it's just like a cherry on top it's like a little bit extra um i like having it because i have it but you don't need it honestly um again c5 just another increase to um this time his ult instead of his skill and c6 is good i'm not gonna lie c6 is absolutely incredible but again you don't need it I only did this because I love Zhongli specifically. I'm like, he's my favorite character, so I wanted to have him maxed out. Um, this is great though, because like, if you do take damage, 40% of that incoming damage is converted into HP, up to 8% of that character's max HP. Basically, it just means it adds more to his durability and survivability. It's another reason why you can have him as a solo character. Um, if you have C6, you technically don't even need a healer, so that's great. As we move into his talents, though, I did end up focusing on his normal attacks. I know a lot of people will probably tell you to focus on um, his skill and his elemental burst, and I do agree with that if you're building a support unit. If you're building a DPS support, don't focus on his main attacks. Definitely focus on his skill and his burst damage because that's where you're going to be getting most of his damage as a support unit if you're using say the the petra set with the noblesse oblige um because that's where you're going to get the majority of his damage however me building him as a main dps knowing that his modifies fires are really low i was like okay well if i'm going to make it work i'm going to go into his main attack and just build it up and then have the physical bonus damage to kind of make up for his lack of power in his normal attacks. And as I looked at his skills, like, I thought his skills, like his just regular skills were just going to be okay. I thought they were going to be all right. They're actually amazing. I was not expecting the pulsating damage to be doing like 1000 damage each pulse. I was not expecting his shield to be nearly as strong as it ended up being. And his burst is insane. Like, look at that skill damage. His skill damage does what? 835%? And then you also get, once you level him up to 70, you get 33% of your HP as an additional attack. It's insane. Like, he he's just great. He's by far, by large, one of the best utility characters in the game because you can build him however you want. However you want him to play, you can make him a main DPS, you can make him a support DPS, you can make him a utility character, like he's just that well-rounded. Um, here are some of my stats. I tried to get crit rate and crit damage as high as I could. Unfortunately, it's not quite as high as I want, but it still hits pretty hard, as you could see. Like I was still doing 2, 5, I think I did 11,000 damage at one point. I do wish his energy recharge was a little bit higher. Um, I think that if you can get it up to around like 130, 140, you're going to be doing great. You're going to be hitting his ult all the time because his ult has such a low cooldown and energy cost that I think it'll just start cycling. And his shield is great. I haven't used any other shield characters that much, but 55% amazing. And he has innate geo bonus damage, which is why most people are going to tell you to build directly into that geo bonus and i agree with that i think that that's great but i ended up going into the physical damage build just because i wanted him to be doing more on his autos and charged attacks and that's what's working for me right now i might fiddle around i might try to go for 
bon Geo bonus damage at some point and just see how that feels. But for right now, I'm really liking my current build, and I think that he's doing great. I'm excited to level him up to level 90 eventually. I'm excited to get his weapon up to level 90 so he hits a little bit harder. And yeah, that's my opinion. I think Song Lee's great. I think that even if you get him at C0 and just want him as a support, he's a great unit to have. I fully endorse him, <laughs> to say. Um, that being said, if you don't like, if you don't like Song Lee, don't pull him. Just don't. Just skip him. Like he, like, at the end of the day, it is completely down to your personal taste, how you like to play, whether you think he's good or not. Don't pay attention to the different tier lists. Don't even necessarily pay attention just to me and what I'm saying, because obviously I'm biased. I liked him. But I think he's better than people are making him out to be. People were really disappointed when he came out because they thought he should be dealing more damage. But I think he's great just the way he is. All right. Well, that's all for now, guys. Um, thanks for sticking around. Sorry for talking your ears off, but I just got really excited about making a guide for Zhongli. I am currently sitting at around 10 subscribers, so we're a really small channel. So any support is greatly appreciated. I hope that maybe one day we can make it to 100. We'll see. Um, so if you do like the channel, if you do like the content that I'm making, please consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. And even something as simple as leaving a quick like or comment could really help start pushing me into the YouTube algorithm and help me grow my channel. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. And I hope that you guys are still enjoying the game and have had all the luck in regards to pulling for Zongli if you decided to. Alright, that's all for now. Best wishes. Bye.